It's hot, it's beautiful, and makes you realize how important zoos can be. Welcome back everyone to another walkthrough of the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, what is undeniably one of the greatest zoological parks in America. In today's video, you'll be getting a tour of what I wouldn't call the park's best exhibit, but it's definitely my personal favorite, and that is the Condor Ridge, home to one of the world's most iconic birds of prey, and some might say the hometown of their comeback story. But you'll also find along the way that it's a lot more than that. Before we begin, I would really appreciate it if you press those like and subscribe buttons to join the channel that takes you on virtual field trips to the zoo. Then I would like all of you to comment below what is an animal that you love and find adorable that the public usually calls ugly. This corner of the park has three very different exhibit attractions bunched together, but have the look and feel of three completely different ecosystems. You got the dry forest in Australia, tropical rainforest, and the tiger trail. But they didn't have to change much for the desert-themed Condor Ridge, since the safari park and surrounding areas already have a natural semi-arid climate, which allowed horticulturalists to put together the succulent, Baja, and native gardens. Six acres of guest-accessible land that's above the Condor Ridge. The the entire park features 1.3 million plants from 3,700 species, so there are many times when this place feels more like a botanical garden than a zoo, and this is one of them. It's perfect for plant lovers, it's worth the view and the walk if you're trying to get your steps in, but just make sure to watch out for all the local ankle biters. If you don't want to make the climb, don't worry, that trail is optional. It's pretty much all flat ground from here on out, for us. Our first animal can find the coziest spots, even in the rockiest terrain like it's nothing. For the first time on zoo tours, the bighorn sheep. Their enclosure gives me sunburn just looking at it. They can survive negative 40 degrees to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Depending on the season, bighorns can go days to months at a time without drinking from a direct water source. But in case there isn't one around, the moisture from their food will do. If they get a little overheated, bighorns can both pant and perspire. One thing that separates the zoo and the safari park from others, they like to specify what subspecies you're looking at. This is a herd of desert or peninsular bighorn sheep, federally classified as endangered, but the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance is doing all it can to ram them away from extinction. And no, it doesn't just involve a breeding program. Their team studies wild bighorn populations that move between the U.S.-Mexican border to determine where this animal needs the most protection. The genetics team extracts DNA from fecal matter to understand population structure across the bighorn's range. And they even have a disease investigations team studying and fighting a respiratory disease that has sent this subspecies numbers into a downward spiral in the past. The Wildlife Alliance doesn't get enough credit for trying to save the bighorn sheep, but it's really hard not to think about San Diego when you bring up the California condor. The same species that deemed them a symbol of power is the same one that destroyed their home, poached them, and gave them a high dosage of lead poisoning. By the early 80s, only 22 wild Cali condors were left. The zoo says that they were the first place to get permission to start a breeding recovery program using wild sourced individuals and their eggs. By 87, the last female died from lead poisoning after eating fragments from a bullet. But one year later, the first zoo-conceived California condor hatched at the safari park. Zoo-bred condors were eventually released in the early 90s, and less than 40 years after the recovery program began, that 22 turned into 500, and more than half of them are living untamed. The birds that you see are not part of the breeding program, and most of them are actually off exhibit in their Condor Minium Breeding Center, which I believe can just barely be spotted if you go on the Asian Cart Safari. The Condor Cam on their website shows a live feed to the breeding center, and if you can't get enough of them, you can also find a committee at the San Diego Zoo's own Elephant Odyssey exhibit. Condor Ridge might be my favorite exhibit here because, as a graphic designer and zoo enthusiast, it's my paradise. It has everything you need to know about desert bighorns on one side of the wall and the cultural significance and detailed visuals of the condor's comeback story on the other, including a bird puppet that the keepers used to feed certain chicks to lower their chances of the little ones imprinting on humans. I said in that video in the corner of your screen that I'm 
fairly certain the World Gardens and Condor Ridge is the highest visitor accessible part of the park, offering a view that'll even make a zoo tour guide tear up a little. If this isn't the most beautiful vista in a zoo, then I don't know what is, and I'd like to be proven wrong so I can go there immediately. You're looking at a good chunk of the safari park's 1800 plus acres, a tiny bit of the Asian savanna, and most of the African plains. So if you have any sort of device that lets you see from a distance, zoom in as much as you can and you'll see that you're not actually just looking at a bunch of empty fields. Condors are the soaring stars, but like I said, the exhibit is a lot more than that. What goes up must come down, and the path starts to take you back downhill towards the main entrance. So we still have six more quick stops. This literally mixes things up with a desert tortoise, a loggerhead shrike and endangered passerine that the Wildlife Alliance has bred and released in the past. And they live with western burrowing owls, at risk of going extinct from habitat loss within San Diego County. The zoo has also started a burrowing owl recovery program by re-engineering parts of their range and making their lives a little safer by building artificial burrows in the wild. The complex next door is home to a power couple, two different animals with the same last name, a red-tailed hawk and a western Harris's hawk. Birds of prey that give the burrowing owl a reason to go underground. Condor Ridge actually started out as a collection of North and Central American desert animals. There were prairie dogs, black-footed ferrets, and even an ocelot. But lately, the theme has since expanded its range to animals like the gray-winged trumpeter, a terrestrial bird from tropical rainforests from the North Amazon Basin in South America. And not too far away, literally and geographically, is the beautiful Toko Toucan. But if you happen to be the director or CEO of this wildlife alliance, please, please bring back their past roommates, the oscillated turkey, a Central American native with bronze and green iridescent feathers that make them look good enough not to eat because they're classified as a near-threatened species. That's one, two, three, four birds of prey, and the park said, let's give this area a fifth one. The Northern Bald Eagle. I've been here twice now, and I've heard several people ask why are they in such a small space where they can't properly fly without reading this sign that answers their question. I'm not really sure what the injuries were, but the moral of this is remember people to read your signs. And last, but nowhere near the least, is the intelligent, curious, and endangered thick-billed parrot endemic to Mexico and a former resident of the southwestern U.S. Parrots are famously social, but they take it to the extreme. Historical records show that their flocks used to contain over 1,000 individuals in one place, which is practically impossible anymore since their population could be as little as 2,500. And that will conclude our second quick walkthrough of the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. As I mentioned at the beginning, I wouldn't quite say that the Condor Ridge is the best attraction, objectively speaking, especially when you compare it to the acres and acres of savannas. But this organization does so much good for wildlife. There is no exhibit here that actually shows off their efforts better than the Condor Ridge. The next time that you hear from me, we will continue down this hill where the desert becomes the rainforest and we will trek through the award-winning Tiger Trail. So please stay tuned, stay wild, and thank you all for watching Zoo Tours.